G'day, I'm Ash. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome aboard the Firecrest. We've taken a minute or two to climb to altitude. And essentially this is about 50 to 60 seconds after the match has started. Climb to about 4,000 meters and we're finally engaging the enemies. Anyway, today we'll be taking a look at the Firecrest. Me and the squad of boys are going to have a look and see what we can do. It was a regretful uh, choice by one of the squad members to play the Firecrest and it turned out pretty well. And it's an aircraft I generally try and avoid because, well, I don't really like flying Firecrest at all. It's heavy, it's cumbersome, it's got limited ammunition, its engine overheats like an absolute <laughs> mad lad. And unfortunately, you know, with a battle rating of 3.3, it kind of does see aircraft that can outperform it. But it has one distinct advantage. Air brakes, which are kind of useless in this kind of context. And the fact that it's only 150,000 squadron research. Anyway, here we go on this fucking wolf. We could all daka daka. And that's when we just, you know, take out his pilot. Out extending this 109 that's behind me and just keeping an eye on my surroundings. Let's just check on how Elder is doing. Uh, he seems to be engaged with one aircraft and I have this 109 behind me. But this thing was introduced in 1.89 Imperial Navy. So I believe that was the Japanese Navy's introduction. And that was 29th of May, 2019. It's been two years already. In fact, well, three. I, I, I can't fathom that amount of time. Hell, I remember when, when the game first came out. 1.27 uh, was the closed beta. And then we had 1.29, which is the public. Um, goodness me. What? Yeah, it's been eight years. <laughs> I've been playing this game for far too long. But essentially, Blackburn decided to... Uh, well develop an improved naval aircraft of the fire brand and they've made three prototypes of this particular aircraft and ever since the arrival of improved technologies such as the jet engine they basically halted the production of this particular aircraft or piston aircraft in, in general after the second world war and well it could be considered a hybrid corsair due to its gull shaped wings but it also has quite a powerful engine I wouldn't call it a sleek ex uh, exterior or a sleek appearance, albeit it has other traits that makes this plane well suited for the naval environment of War Thunder. But in an air context, it's quite cumbersome. And well, Elder here is engaging a 109. He set the Focke-Wulf 190 on there on fire and I'm coming in to try and at least give him some resemblance of support while the others go after ground attackers. At the current stage, the only kills on the team are from firecrests, and that's going to be important later down the line. Anyway, give him an old rat -a -tat. Should have been able to kill him there, wasn't necessarily able to. I don't know whether it was sparking, Australian internet, or just the universal belt on the uh, firecrest itself. Unfortunately, Elder's entered a flat spin. The 109's trying to take off some critical components. He manages to do such, and Elder can't necessarily recover. So, entertainingly, we're going to watch him spiral out of control as I take out the aircraft that basically put him in a state of non-existence. And again, very poorly aimed shots there. And notice that arcade sound than when playing. It really irritates me when Gaussian keeps changing the sound effects for aircraft. That initial sound file actually comes from the cartoon event, uh, or Furry Thunder if you want to call it that. Earlier this year we had an arcade game mode which had those iconic sounds as you can see Ella just spinning around in circles over there. Oh, there he goes, rest in peace. And it's my job now to kill this 109. Anyway, we'll get to that in due time. This thing has combat flaps, it does have takeoff flaps, it's got landing flaps, it has air brakes, and it does have an arrestor gear. Making this thing quite a chunky boy. The flaps rip off about 430. At takeoff, uh, the limits are 400 and landing is 272. Anyway, this F4 is coming in. I'm gonna light him on fire. Yep, that's my cue to leave him alone. If he's burning and already heading towards the ground, it's time to nullify the problem. And there we go. That is our second kill of the match. Now, this thing does get combat flaps, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, air brakes, and an arrestor gear. It's upgraded speed, max is 636 uh, at an altitude of 10,000 meters, a takeoff run of 300 meters. Essentially, you've got a very chunky boy, right? Combat flaps are 430 of the limit, takeoff 404, and at landing, that's 272. 
You need uh, positive 10 Gs and negative 4 Gs quite comfortably in this aircraft. You don't have to worry about that too much. Now, we're heading into dangerous area here. A couple of 109s and a BF-110 low altitude in my flight path in order to get back to the base. The 109 is going to have a cracking good go at me. I'm going to sort of try and evade him as much as possible. Because, well, that Zero nearly plowed it into the ground. The American Premium Zero chasing that F-4. And, well, he collides into the ground and Elder gets the kill. Now, there's another 109. We're going to pull under him, pop the combat flaps, and just take a light amount of damage. He nearly ended up as into the ground there himself. And we're going to play this game of maintaining aerial supremacy, which is a hard game to play, considering you've only got 53 rounds of ammunition. Alas, we're waiting until Jeebus can reinforce us, and then it's going to return to hangar, or at least return to base. Now, this 109 is not necessarily playing ball. If you're at low speeds like this, you're a prime target. This thing's heavy, fat, and slow. And I've had to keep the throttle pulled down considerably in order to keep this thing afloat. Needless to say that that 110 wants to have a good go, so we're going to let him have a good go. And, you know, it's not going to end well for him. He's going to try his best, but you just never, ever, especially in this thing with such a weak engine, or at least... It's a very strong engine until it stops working, right? <laughs> and obviously, it's one of the reasons I dislike the vehicle. Although, it can hold a torpedo, so it's quite good for naval, and obviously can hold RP-3s. You know, this thing has air brakes. You know, it's good for a dive bomber. It gets an interceptor spawn, on average. Um, and it also gets, you know, a decent roll rate, which is nice. Now, the, it does have M3 Browning machine guns, which are quite fast fire rate, but their incredibly low ammunition count makes this thing basically utterly useless. Unless you get lucky like me in this instance, which we're playing on uh, Jeebus' stream. Now, that 109 is going to come back to bite me in the rear just in a moment. Or are we going to bite him in the rear? Who knows? The, the, the warped magic thing. As you can see here, I'm just fighting engine control. And I don't use manual engine control in air realistic battles. In fact, I don't even use them in sim either. Many people will go off at me in the comments for not using manual engine control. Honestly, for a default game, as War Thunder is a sim arcade, essentially, it's an arcade experience. You don't really need to have that kind of energy or engine management at your fingertips. This isn't DCS, it isn't IL-2. There are plenty of other ways you can play that in a Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's not necessary for War Thunder unless you're really getting into finite control over your aircraft. Anyway, 109 makes an absolute critical error. Aim up at his aircraft, fire 50 rounds, and one manages to land his pilot. There you go, there's the third kill. Anyway, we're returning to base, rearming, we're taking off, and we're going to get back up in the air. Now, I think this machine has matured with a bit of age. It certainly is interesting to play again. I haven't touched it since its first introduction a couple of years back. You know, it isn't a very maneuverable aircraft at low speeds. It's only got 300 rounds per gun, only two uh, Browning M3s. It's got a limited uh, payload compared to the Firebrand and several other contemporaries in the fleet air arm. Its large engine makes it a prime target, especially if you're doing head-ons. Just something to try and avoid as much as possible. And well, it's very vulnerable to ground fire. And I like this plane. It's annoying, and it nearly ended up as my top 10 hated aircraft in War Thunder, due to the fact that I just couldn't stand playing it due to its limited machine gun uh, ammo. But here we are, engaging the last 109. He's finally come out of the clouds to engage us. This guy initially was doing the right thing by overextending. We can't catch a 109F like that on the deck, so best approach for us is to climb up behind him and at least gain a bit of altitude so we can retain a bunch of that speed. And this thing, being an absolute heavy bastard, is quite interesting in, in its own way because, yeah, it doesn't accelerate very fast or beyond around 550, maybe 600 kilometers if you're pushing it. But as a free research vehicle that you can unlock by sitting in a squadron, essentially, and earning squadron research points, it's a fantastic little aircraft, I must admit. Being the first aircraft to come into that program, there are two others. There's the ME262A1U1 and the A4E early. So two jets and then this fleet air arm uh, prototype vehicle, which, I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> it's just an absolute monster in, in the sense that its overwhelming presence is quite annoying to deal with when, uh, you know, things aren't going too well. 
regardless it's also important to note that most of the team in fact majority of the team at this point in time have had uh been killed by fire crests which is quite interesting anyway this 109 pilot was pretty good for out extending his mistake was turning back in and jubis goes for a run i'm gonna pull in under him he's gonna panic a little bit and i don't know what he's doing here usually most pilots would be ducking and weaving here he realizes that i'm on his six look at him go I'll give it the big old try, but this is the death for him right here. I can just spray and pray in his general direction, and he's going to basically either die, or he's going to get caught on fire like this. And I'm more than happy to watch him burn. But yeah, that's really the Blackbird... Uh, Blackbird. It is the B-48, the Blackburn Firecrest. Such an interesting strike aircraft that you couldn't really uh, pass an opportunity to really play it again. So thanks to Elder for suggesting this vehicle when we were just playing as a squad casually as a bunch of mates do let me know what you think of this particular aircraft are there things you'd like me to check out or fly leave a comment in, in, in the well, description but in the comment section down below let me know what you think do you enjoy flying this thing and really that's about it four kills unfortunately we didn't get an ace but that's about as close as we can come to an ace considering that most of the team got kills on aircraft uh primarily from the fire crest Anyway, big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and to all you lovely bastards for watching, especially recently. I think I found my mojo again. But regardless, we'll see you in the next one, hey? Cheers. My name is Ash. Catch you next time.